Hello again, grade 10s. In today's lesson, we will join Eloise and Rifilwe as they investigate the gradients of parallel and perpendicular lines. They will also compare the gradients of parallel lines with those of perpendicular lines. Watch carefully and see what they discover. Let's look at parallel lines first. I'm going to choose a line segment, copy it and translate it on the Cartesian plane. Watch this carefully. I will take line segment ST. The coordinates of S and T are 5, 2 and 10, 6 respectively. Do you remember the formula for gradient? I know. It's y2 minus y1, all divided by x2 minus x1. Yes. So the gradient of ST will be 6 minus 2, all divided by 10 minus 5, which comes to 4 divided by 5. To make a line segment parallel to ST, I first make a copy of ST. Let me call this copy line UV. Now I translate or move the whole line two units vertically upwards. Every point on the line segment ST moves up two units. That means the X values stay the same and the Y values each increase by two units. This means that there is a constant distance all the way between these two lines. That means that the new line segment UV is parallel to ST. Do you think you can find the coordinates of U and V for us, Rafilwe? Okay, let's see. Hmm. The X value is still 5 and the Y value will be 4. So the coordinates of U will be 5, 4. For V, the X value is still 10 and the Y value will be 6 plus 2. That's 8. The coordinates of V will be 10, 8. Good work. You are getting pretty good at this. Now we can work out the gradient of the translated line. UV is 8 minus 4 all divided by 10 minus 5, which is 4 divided by 5. Now have a look at the gradients that we found for the two lines. Do you notice anything interesting about them? Hey, the gradients are equal. So we have two parallel lines with equal gradients. Does this happen with all parallel lines or are we just lucky this time around? Although we have only tested one case of parallel lines, we can use these ideas and apply them to all parallel line segments. We can prove that if two lines are parallel, then they have equal gradients. That's really cool. I must remember to write that down. I'm sure I'll need it later. Good idea. Now let's move on and have a look at the gradients of perpendicular lines. To find the gradient of the line y equals x, we need to choose any two points on the line. Let's choose 2, 2, and 4, 4. So let me work out the gradient. To find the gradient of the line A, A prime, we can use the coordinates of A and A prime. That is 2, 5 and 5, 2. So that's 2 minus 5 over 5 minus 2. That's negative 3 over 3, and the gradient comes to negative 1. That was quite easy, but I don't see what was so clever about those answers. Okay, let me show you the clever part. Let's look at our answers again. I'm going to find the product of the gradient of these two lines. 1 times negative 1, which is negative 1. This answer of negative 1 is the same for any two lines on the Cartesian plane that are perpendicular to each other. Any two perpendicular lines? I must admit, that was quite clever. 
but you've always told me to check with more than one example. So can we look at other perpendicular lines? You're absolutely right, Rafilwe. And I see you aren't going to let me off the hook on this one. Right? Here's another example. This time I will give you the coordinates of both line segments. Here we have line MN. M's coordinates are 3, 1 and N's coordinates are 8, 5. My second line is VW with 3, 6 at V and 7, 1 at W. Hey, you can't do that to me. You can't just give me two lines and expect me to believe that they're both perpendicular. Mind you, though, they do look a bit perpendicular. It seems I can't catch you out on anything today. Well, let's measure this angle between MN and VW. Oh, okay, I'm happy now. So it's exactly 90 degrees. So MN is perpendicular to VW. Let me find the gradient. I love doing that. The gradient of MN will be 5 minus 1, all divided by 8 minus 3. That's 4 divided by 5. So its gradient is 4 fifths. Am I right so far? Right on track. Keep going. Sure. The gradient of VW will be 1 minus 6. All divided by 7 minus 3. That's negative 5 divided by 4. Great. What we want to check is this. The product of the gradients of any two perpendicular lines is negative 1. I could write this as m1 times m2 is negative 1. For the gradient of line mn, we can write the gradient of mn like this. So that is 4 divided by 5. And the gradient of line vw is negative 5 divided by 4. Okay, so now we can multiply these gradients together. This gives me negative 1. It worked! That's so cool! You can do some more examples for yourself, but I can guarantee you that if the lines you use are perpendicular, then the product of their gradients will come to negative 1. This idea becomes useful when we know the gradient of one line and want to find the gradient of a line which is perpendicular to it. We can use the gradient we know to find the gradient of the perpendicular line which we don't know. Let me show you what I mean. Say I have a line with a gradient of 3 divided by 4 and I want to find the gradient of a line that is perpendicular to this one. How do you think I can do this? Well, you could say that 3 quarters times the gradient must give you the answer of negative 1. Yes, you are right. What number multiplied by 3 over 4 will give an answer of negative 1? How about if I multiply 3 over 4 by 4 over 3? Let's see. The 4s will cancel, the 3s will cancel, and I'll get an answer of 1. But I don't want 1. I want negative 1. What you need is a negative number. So if I multiply by negative 4 divided by 3, I'll get negative 1. Do you see the shortcut we can use? To find the perpendicular line's gradient, we can invert the gradient of the line and change the sign of it. I don't really see it. Can you show me again? Sure. Let's do one more. If line 1 has a gradient of negative 2 over 7 and line 2 is perpendicular to line 1, what is the gradient of line 2? Well, the shortcut says that we must invert the given gradient and change the sign. So turn negative 2 over 7 upside down, which gives us negative 7 over 2. 
and then change the sign from negative to positive and the gradient of line 2 is positive 7 over 2. Wow, I've learned something new. Glad to have helped. Well, grade 10s, I hope you got that. Parallel lines always have the same gradients, and when multiplying the gradients of perpendicular lines, the product is always equal to minus 1. Remember to look at the tasks for this section in the Introducing Analytical Geometry task video. You'll also find more resources on this section on our website.